Hi there Jeep owners, today in your 2020 Jeep Gladiator, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Blue Oxus Dowd wiring. A diode wiring kit is going to take all the lighting signals from your motor home and transfer them to the lights at the back of your vehicle. This way when you're flat towing, people behind you will know your intentions when going down the road. This includes your left turn signal, right turn signal, tail lamps, and brake lamps, keeping you DOT compliant in all states as well. There's five main components you'll need when flat towing your vehicle behind your motor home. You'll need your tow bar, which is the connection between your motor home and your vehicle your safety cables, which is a supplemental connection in addition to your tow bar in the event of a catastrophic disconnect. You'll also need your base plate, which provides a connection point on your vehicle for your tow bar and safety cables to attach to, as well as often places for your wiring as well. You'll also need your diode wiring, which will take all the lighting signals from your motorhome and transfer it to your vehicle. So people behind you will know your intentions when going down the road. And your supplemental braking system, which will apply the brakes in your vehicle when you hit them in your motorhome to help you come to a smooth and safe stop. Some other options beside diode wiring is bulb and socket kit, which would install an additional bulb inside your assembly. You'd actually have to drill a hole to add it, but that's really not an option on most modern vehicles with LED lights because there's not room inside for them. Another option would be magnetic lighting where you can just stick those to a magnetic surface on the vehicle and then run a cable up to the front so you can plug it into your motorhome. The only problem with these is that you have to set it up every single time you want a flat tow. You got to get those out, put them on and plug it in and run that wire. And on some vehicles, you may have issues finding a good magnetic surface. The main reason that I prefer diode wiring over any other system is because it uses the factory lights on our vehicle. So it's one of the cleanest looks. It's ready to use every time you want to use it. You just simply plug it in once you've done the install. And the diodes also protect your vehicle from any of the current that's coming from your motorhome. It directs it to your lights and it acts as a one-way check valve for electricity so it can't come from your motorhome and then backfeed down to your computer systems and damage your vehicle. I also like this type of system because if you're going to install a braking system, many different systems out there require tapping into the diode or the lighting systems to get your brake signal. So this will help you out in that as well. Now this diode wiring kit does not come with a connection solution here at the front. It just comes with the bare wires. The most common is a six pole that you'll see here, which you can purchase separately here at eTrailer. And if you pay attention to your tow bars, some tow bars do come included with the six pole connector. So you may not even need to purchase another one. Another option is adding a four pole connector here at the front. That's not as traditional as it's only gonna give you your lighting signals. So I do highly recommend going with the six pole instead. So you've got options for additional accessories that you can place in there, such as a charge line kit. Now that we've gone over some of the features, why don't you follow along with me and we'll show you how to get it installed. We'll begin our installation underneath the vehicle here at the back. We can actually access our tail light wiring without removing the tail lights because they're right here down below. And we're just underneath the vehicle here at the back corner on the driver's side. And as you can see here, this is the wiring that goes up to the tail light. So we can actually tap into it right here. I just took my razor knife and I cut back some of the sheathing here and I just peeled it off to reveal all the wires. Once we've got it exposed, we can get the wires that we need. We want the yellow wire. That's gonna be our stop turn circuit for the driver's side here. And we also want the white wire with the gray stripe. But this is where it does get a little tricky because you'll notice there is another white wire with the gray stripe in here. This one is a smaller diameter wire though. If we hold both of these next to each other, you can see that one is a smaller diameter, smaller gauge wire than the other. We don't want the small one. The small one is for a sense circuit so we can determine if the bulbs are working properly. We want the one that's thicker. So we've got those two isolated by themselves. You can go ahead and cut both of these wires. Once you've got them cut, we're gonna strip back each end of these wires so we can crimp on the female spade terminals that come included with our kit. Now that we've got them all stripped back, we're gonna take the female spade terminals that come in our kit we're gonna slide it over the end of the wire and then crimp it on. We're gonna repeat that for each of these wires. So now we can take the four pole harness that comes in our kit. I've gone ahead and taken off the wrappings that had it wound up. And on the ends here, we need to separate these out. We're only gonna be using the yellow, brown, and white on the driver's side here and we're gonna be using the green on the passenger side. Now you do get extra green and brown wire in your kit because our brown wire here, we need to actually go over to the passenger side as well. We need both those circuits. We're gonna be using a section of the white wire though because we got plenty of length here so we can go ahead and use what's here already. So what we'll be doing is taking our snips, we're gonna cut the green wire to separate it 
and we're just going to peel this back. We're going to need to peel this back enough to where our yellow wire here can reach over to this side and the green wire can reach all the way over to the other side. We don't need to peel that all the way for now. You can do that here in a little bit, but you do want to get that out of the way because we don't need it over here. The remaining three wires here, we are going to take and cut the same way, but we're going to have all these wires over here. So we're just going to peel these back just a little bit, just enough so that we can work with them over on the driver's side here. So about that far is probably good. We're gonna then strip back each one of these three wires here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and route the wire up towards there a little bit. We're gonna go over a few things just so I've got the wires over here on this side. And then we can make our connections up here and get them hooked in. I've got our wires routed over here to the driver's side. I went ahead and put the green wire over towards the passenger side. The yellow wire, we're gonna take one of our spade terminals and we're gonna crimp that onto our yellow wire. And then the brown and the white wire here, we're gonna be using a small section of this white wire to jump the brown circuit over to the passenger side. And the easiest way that I found to do this is when you take your wires here and stretch them out, your green to one side and your yellow to the other. If you take the green and kind of fold it back down the harness from where you had peeled it back and see where the green wire ends on the harness, that's where I cut the white wire and then I can use a section of this to run over to the other side. So that means both of these wires here need to be hooked together. And this can be a little tricky because the spade terminal that you get included with your kit is just barely large enough to slide over two wires. But if you twist them like that, and then when you take your spade terminal, if you also twist it while pushing it on, you can usually get them to all fit inside that one terminal. We'll then crimp these down. we're ready to make our diode connection on the driver's side here. If we look at our diode up close, you'll see it is labeled out and in. Out is always gonna to go towards our taillight assemblies, and the in is gonna be our vehicle and the wiring that we ran. So we're gonna go ahead and take our diode here. We're gonna start with the yellow circuit, which is our stop and turn for the driver's side here, for the left side. So this is towards the assembly, the taillight assembly. So we're gonna plug that into the out, we're then gonna take our diode, we're gonna bring it up here. We're gonna take the yellow wire that we had cut the other end of it. This is going back towards our, the rest of our vehicle. We're gonna plug that into one of the insides. Then the harness that we had routed over here, we're gonna take the yellow wire from it, cause that's our stop turn that we're routing. And we wanna plug it into the other end. We'll then take our other diode and we're just gonna repeat this procedure pretty much exactly the same. We're gonna put the out on our taillight wire towards the taillight housing. The other end of our taillight wire, we're gonna plug into the in. And then our white and brown wires that we had connected here, we're gonna to connect to the other side. So now that we've got these all connected up, you can go ahead and tape this back up and put some zip ties on it to clean it up. And then we're gonna head over to the passenger side now where we've routed both the green wire and then a section of this white wire. So over here, you can see on our passenger side, we routed over both the green wire as well as a section of that white wire. This is what's connected to the brown wire over on the driver's side. On this side, we do the same procedures, but we have to cut different wires. We open up the harness and we're gonna take the green wire, that's our stop turn for the passenger side and the white wire with the orange stripe. It's easier on this side because there is no other wire that has the same color. So once you find these two, you know you got the right ones. Our white wire that we'd run over is the taillight circuit, so that's gonna plug into the diode that has the white with orange wire, and the green wire that we ran over is our stop turn circuit, so that's gonna plug into the diode that has the factory green wires on it. You can see here where I taped it back up and then zip tied it to make sure that our diodes stay in place. So now that we've got all the connections made here at the back, we're gonna start routing our wire towards the front. So we went ahead and went above our spare tire here. Our wire kind of came out towards the center here. We zip tie it to any factory wiring along the way. We went above our spare tire and tried to stay above all the heat shields because we want to avoid anything excessively hot like our exhaust and any moving components like our steering or suspension. What? We come out over our heat shield on the driver's side in front of the spare tire. Our factory harness is here so we zip tie it to that along the way. Keep going forward 
And you'll notice here that we've got the white wire here. This is where we had cut our white wire and used that section to make that jumper across. We're gonna run this into the bottom of the vehicle right here. There's a nice support channel here underneath the bed that we can run right into. It's gonna give us a good ground. And since it's a channel, we know we're not gonna be drilling through the bed or into the vehicle or anything. So we can go ahead and take a break here for a second from rounding our wire and we're gonna make this connection. So we're gonna take the white wire here, we're gonna strip it back, and then you'll get a single ring terminal that comes included with your kit. That's what we're gonna be crimping on here. There's our ring terminal, it slides on just like that. Once we've got it slid on our wire, we just need to crimp it down. I went ahead then and just took the included self-tapping screw, pushed it through the ring terminal, and ran it right into that channel. I used a quarter inch drill bit to do so. Now, one of the things I didn't like about this kit is this ring terminal here has an opening that's actually slightly larger than the ring terminal that, or than the self-tapping screw that they give you. So you wanna make sure you push that ring terminal off to one side so that way you get a good bite on it and make sure it doesn't rotate after you've tightened it down. So now we've got our ground attached. We just continue going forward. We stay above the heat shield here, just above our muffler. And when we come out the other side of our heat shield here, we actually go right on top of the frame we go over the top of the frame to the outside of the frame and there's an opening on the other side where we're actually gonna go inside the frame. So here we are right on the outside. You can see where we went into the opening. And from here we stay inside the frame going all the way up in the frame still until we get about to this point here. And then we're gonna come out the frame on the inside of the frame here. And here's where we come out the inside of the frame we're pretty much right in line with the center of our wheel here. There's an open hole. That's where we come out. We then go up around the steering gear there, trying to make sure we can avoid anything that's moving. Because here's the bottom of our steering gear. We wanted to stay away from that because this arm pivots. You can see where we come out next to the frame. We stay along the frame until we get in front of all of our moving components. And then we just drill a hole here at the front for our undershield and poked our wire through it. I then slid a little bit of wire loom on it just to help protect it and make it look nicer. If you need some wire loom, you can get some here at E-Trailer. And then we come right out here in the front where we can mount up a six bolt connector and get it attached because the front of your wires are just gonna be bare. We don't have anything here and you'll need a four or a six pole in order to connect to your motorhome to get your lighting. A six pole is what I would recommend. That's gonna have everything you'll need for wiring, for lights, as well as a couple extra spots that you can use for accessories that are gonna be useful later on down the road. Now I did wanna point out this large hole here in the frame. This is just behind the tire on the driver's side. We're installing an Air Force One supplemental braking system, which doesn't require diode wiring for the braking system to work properly, but many of the braking systems out there do require you to tap into your diode wiring for the system to work properly. If I was going to install or use one of those braking systems, I would have routed this wire up to the top of our engine compartment there so I could easily access those to make those connections. So what I would normally do if I was putting one of those braking systems on is I would come out this large hole here. You can easily pull this fender liner back and then go straight up the back of the firewall and then you can just route your wire forward and then go back down to the front to reach the same place in the end. But it's much easier if you bring that wire up to install a braking system that taps into it. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how to hook up a six pole. If you were doing a four pole, it'd be easy because four poles are already color coded, so you just match color to color. But a six pole is not that way. You'll also need a bracket to mount it on your Gladiator. In many cases, your base plate provides an attachment point, but the one we have here does not. So we went ahead and just used one of the pre-existing holes and another self-tapping screw to run a bracket up into here. You can get brackets here at each trailer as well. We're gonna, take, we're gonna start off by taking some of this excess. We don't need all of this. We're gonna cut some of this off. I like to leave a little bit of excess here out the front just to make it easier to make our connections. And if we had to do any testing or future repairs at all, it just makes things a little bit easier. We can then take each of these wires and we're gonna separate them similarly to how we did it at the back. And then we'll strip back each one once we get them all separated. So now we've got those all separated and stripped. We can take the rubber boot that comes with our six pole connector. We're gonna slide that on first. just like that. And then we'll take our connector here and we're gonna loosen up the screws for the appropriate circuits that we're gonna be connecting. I like to start on the ground circuit, which is labeled GD. So if you look there, there's little labels. So we're gonna loosen up 
GD for ground. Then if we just give it a little spin, next to that we'll have LT, which is left turn. That's our yellow wire. Ground was our white wire. Give it a spin again, and then it says RT. RT is our right turn signal. That's our green wire. Next, it says S. We're not gonna use that one, we're gonna skip. And the next one says TM. That is our tail light wiring. That's our brown wire, so we're gonna use that one as well. The center pin we're not gonna use, but if you were installing a charge line, that's where that would attach. That's an accessory that I would recommend for most people flat towing, because that way when you're flat towing, it'll ensure your battery stays topped up when you're going down the road. So now we're just gonna poke in our wires into the appropriate hole based on the labeling. So we're gonna go back to the one labeled ground, that was white. We're then just gonna poke it in and tighten our screw down, and we'll just work our way around that circle, attaching the appropriate wire to the appropriate connection point. Now that we've got all of our connections made there, you can see all of our wires attached. We're gonna take some dielectric grease and we're gonna be real generous with it here on the back side of our connector. That's gonna help seal this up and keep out any moisture. It's help us ensure that we have a long lasting corrosion free connection. Uh, and then we'll slide our boot on it. And then to keep our boot in place and to help seal in our grease, I'm gonna tape up both the front and back side of our boot to our connector here. And then I also like to tape up the back side as well. We can then just slide our connector into place. And then we're gonna go ahead and attach our six pole to the bracket using the hardware that came included with the bracket. So now that we've got our wiring completed, we wanna go ahead and test everything out. You can plug into your motor home to do this at home. I plugged in a tester here at the front of the vehicle. And you wanna verify that all your lighting signals work. So operate your left turn signal, your right turn signal, tail lamps, and brake lamps. And with all of our lights working properly, we're ready to hook our vehicle up to our motor home, put it into flat tone, hit the road. And that completes our installation of Blue Ox's diode wiring on our 2020 Jeep Gladiator.